Hi, welcome to BeryThoughtfulLife.com. I'm Kenesha Berry. I'm a relationship life coach and pastoral counselor. I help my clients get clear about who they are so they can live the life that they desire. My desire is to help people break free from limited thinking and beliefs. Oftentimes I do this by challenging what they've been taught about particular issues. And so the topic I want to share about today is the idea of love in marriage and relationships. Because oftentimes we have these unhealthy ideals and views about love and marriage. I believe that if your sole reason or your measurement for a successful relationship or marriage is happiness, you're gonna find yourself continuously disappointed and you're going to believe that marriage doesn't work for you or that you've met the wrong person or you're trying to figure out why can't you do relationship well and that's because happiness is never the goal for marriage it's not the goal for relationships god designs everything with a reason and a purpose for growth we must evolve, we must change, we must become better than who we are today. And in this fantasy idea of a happy marriage where nothing goes wrong, where the person agrees with everything you agree to and see life your way, there is no opportunity for growth. This is why I want to invite you to this new concept, this new idea of why, why you're in relationships with people but particularly in your marriage. I want you to, to rethink your concept of a soulmate. So growing up, I oftentimes heard people talk about wanting to find their true soulmate. And the soulmate was supposed to be the person who, you know, together you created this harmonious life and you agreed to everything and life was just wonderful. But here's the thing. Let's talk about what is the soul. The soul are your thoughts, they are your beliefs, and it, it, it expresses itself in your behaviors. So I want you to think about this. So you're out there looking for a soul mate. So I want you to start thinking about what do you think about? What emotional wounds do you have? Because I believe we are attracting to ourselves a soul mate. However, our concept and ideal about that it's based on fantasy. It's oftentimes based on movie behavior, right? So if your soulmate thinks like you think, emotes the way you emote, meaning that there are emotional wounds in their soul. And I want to explain to you what I mean when I say an emotional wound. Emotional wound is believing anything that doesn't align up with who God called you to be. I'm a Bible girl. The Bible tells us that in the beginning, when God created man in his image, he said it was good. So we are created in the image of God. We are to have the mindset of God. But we know because of sin, that has made it impossible unless we come to God through the Holy Spirit by receiving Jesus. Okay, I know for some people who listen to this, you're like, well, I don't do the whole God, Jesus thing. That's fine. Do me a favor. You might want to leave and exit the video now. Because that's where I believe the core of my, that is the core of my belief. And that's where I teach from. And it's okay if we don't agree. You don't have to leave me nasty comments. You're welcome to just go ahead on and, and go to someone else. But here's what I'm talking about. If you are a believer and you are trying to connect with someone soul to soul, what if this, what you're drawn to yourself is your soul energy? Meaning if you think little, little of yourself, if you believe that um, no one loves you, you feel rejected all the time, you deal with abandonment issues, you were neglected by your parents, um, you was abused, and you've never dealt with those issues, you've never addressed that part of yourself, you are attracting people into that space. So if you're really hoping to find a soulmate, you're going to connect with souls who are also vibing at that same level of energy, that way of thinking, that way of feeling. 
So they're going to begin to reflect back to you what you're feeling, or they're going to at very least cause you to constantly feel like you're at war with them because they are inciting inside of you the emotions you don't want to handle deal with. Well, he makes me feel insecure. That's because insecurity is inside of you. I don't feel like he loves me. That is because there's a part of you that feels unloved. And so you've attracted to yourself the person who would trigger that part of you because that is the soul wound area that our Heavenly Father wants to heal in you. I, I really want people to begin to get this concept. So you're out there looking for the fantasy of the world of love, the fantasy idea. I call it the Cinderella syndrome. You're looking for the person who's going to come into your life, take away all of the difficult times, and now you're going to live happily ever after. Listen, there is a reason there is not a part two to Cinderella. There's a reason they keep redoing that story. There's a reason that Hollywood never shows us what happily ever after looks like. <laughs> like the movie always ends on a happy note. Because no one knows what that looks like because it doesn't exist. I am not saying we can't be happy in life. That's not what I'm saying. But I want you to understand, like, happiness are moments. They are not every day. They are not... It is not the goal to just live this happy life. The goal in life is to grow, is to develop, to, to become more like Jesus, to be willing to be giving of yourself, to love at a level that you didn't think was possible. But in order to get to that place, you must first find that within yourself. And I believe that we can only find that when we're connected to God, when we're connected to something greater than ourselves. Because if we make ourselves the measuring tool for good and loving, and if they would just be like me, if they would see the world like me, when you become the <laughs> when you become the standard, we're all in trouble. Here's the thing: we we don't see our own faults, we don't see our own um limitations. This is how I know. This I was li recently listening to a panel of women talking about what it was like, you know, growing up in their household, and they're now addressing these what I call soul wounds, but these injuries that happened in their life in the past that are now showing up in today in their relationships. So one of the ladies was saying she never thought about the idea that the way her parents raised her created trauma. And so now she was raising her son the exact same way because in her mind, I'm okay. Now, this woman hasn't had any healthy relationships. She talks about that. Um, she struggles to be in relationship with men because she, you know, has like a dominant personality. And I'm not saying you can't be have a, the personality you have. I'm just saying these are things she's talked about that she said that she finds as a struggle. You know, she wants to be in, in relationship, but she's constantly pushing me in a way she's challenging them. Now, mind you, she is saying, I'm okay. So I'm raising my son the way I was raised. I talk to him the way my parents talk to him because, hey, I turned out to be a pretty good person. And maybe you, she did. But there are still areas that was affected by the things that was done to her or said to her. And she admitted she wasn't abused, but, you know, she was cursed out. That's a form of abuse, guys. She wasn't um, necessarily beaten by her parents, but there were times when she felt neglected. But she's taking those exact same habits, and she's raising her son. Like, she hasn't tried to do anything any differently because she said, I'm okay. We all think we're okay. Right? And on some levels, we are. We all think we're okay. But what I'm saying is when we become the standard, we're in trouble. <laughs> so what, what if the standard becomes Christ? The way he loved. The way he was giving. The way he was forgiving. Um, the way he was accepting. What if that became the standard? Now who I am, my standard of being okay can use some work. It can use some possible some opportunities for growth. 
I can't grow by myself, guys. I can't grow um, outside of relationship. Because when I'm by myself, just like the lady on the panel, I'm okay. I'm good. I'm, you know, I'm straight. <laughs> I'm this, I'm that. I'm okay. But when I'm in relationship with people, and when you're in relationship with people, and they irritate you, and they call up your insecurities, and they so-called make you feel unloved or unwanted, or they remind you of how how um, often times you deal with feeling abandoned or you feel unworthy. This is where, the, these are the areas that you're not okay. And these are the areas that I am certain that God wants to come into those places and bring his love and his full acceptance so that you know that you are word created in his image and that you are created for great love. So this is why I'm saying to you, you are attracting your soulmate. And they're not just coming in love interest. They're coming in forms of your children, people that own your job. These people are being coming into your life to teach you something about you. They are giving you the opportunity to ask God, what, what areas in my life, Lord, would you like to reveal to me? so that I can heal in those places. I have a lot of rejection issues, right? And in those places, because now I know that I am aware that I have a soul wound of rejection. I am aware that there are certain situations and areas that triggers that wound every time. Because I'm aware of the wound, I now, prior to going into certain situations, and oftentimes, and that's almost any situation, I have to do what I call priming. What I call priming is just sitting before the Lord, praying, receiving his love, receiving his acceptance, saying over and over in my heart and my mind, I am greatly loved. I am accepted. I am worthy in God's sight. I have to fill my heart, my mind, my soul with that space so that I can go and be who I was called to be in every space so that I don't shut down to the little part of myself that is wounded so I don't live out my wound I don't react from my wound I don't re respond from my wound I don't make decisions from the wound this is why you have to expand your concept of a soulmate so that you can begin to allow your, your life to grow and expand and know that there are people coming into your life to challenge who you are to reflect to you your soul again your thoughts your emotions, and your behaviors, not to just celebrate you, but so that God can call you to a higher place so that you can grow. So I hope you take this message. I, if, if you gain anything from this, if this has challenged the way you're thinking about love and relationships now, I encourage you to share this with some people, like share this video out. And if you need help healing from those emotional wounds of your past, if you're unaware of what the wounds are, but your life keeps producing the same behavior. I promise you, if you continuously produce the same behavior in your finances, in your relationships, in your health, if you're struggling with weight, but you can't get it off and you don't know why, if you're struggling with getting your money in order, you don't know why. Life is spiritual, guys. And when your soul is in disarray and you are unaware of what, what is causing the chaos in your life, it is because you are operating from your hurt. You're operating from your soul wound. And it's okay. You could be completely unaware of it, but I'm promising you, your life is reflecting it. And those are the areas that God wants to heal. So I'm a relationship life coach and a pastoral counselor, and I would love to work with you to help you get free and live the abundant life that Jesus came and promised all of us. So I hope you'll, you know, you'll reach out, you'll continue to follow me, you'll share my things on Facebook and on YouTube, and you'll stay connected to BerryThoughtfulLife.com. Thanks so much for listening.